Geekazine and Geek Smack is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network over at techpodcast.com. If it's tech, then it's here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is Jeffrey Powers, and you are on Geek Smack, episode number 199, which means we've done 199 episodes of this show, and next week means the 200th episode, and we're going to be giving away some prizes, and we're going to have a lot of fun with that episode, but right now, we're going to tell you a little bit more about that about that later but right now we got a show to get out of your way to get to 200 and we're going to do that now and it's brought to you by audible.com go over to audible audiblepodcast.com forward slash geekazine for a 14 day free trial and free download of your audio book that's at audiblepodcast.com forward slash geekazine carbonite.com go over to carbonite.com get that 15 day free trial using the offer code tpn and when you're ready to buy you get two bonus months off of that offer code TPN. Of course, we're also brought to you by uh, Stitcher. Go over to stitcher.com forward slash geek to get yourself a download of this great free software and a chance to win $100. And then, of course, all of this video is being created on Telestream Wirecast. Produce live webcasts yourself by with Telestream and Wirecast. All right, let's get into your Geek Smack for this week. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to Geek Smack, the place where we smack the geek out of you like, uh, I don't know, like maybe uh, Steve Jobs smacks out of Apple. I don't know. Anyway, we've got a lot of great news for you. We're going to be doing a lot of tech news. We're going to be doing a lot of geek news. Of course, we have the Geek Smack crap this week. And then, of course, the feature, we're going to be talking about how newspapers are starting to get into the game, news sources starting to get in the game to realize it's time to move on. We're going to be talking about that in a few minutes. But first of all, yes, we are on episode number 199. We've done this for four years, almost four years. Come October 2nd, I believe, was the magic date that the first show, what I called the podcast at that time, will air for you. It had no name, and then we gave it the name of Geekazine Weekly Podcast, and then it slowly evolved, and it got to the point where it's like, okay, we're doing more video than we're doing audio. People are watching more than they're listening, so it's time to kind of make the change, so it not it gears to an audio show that has never changed, but the video show becomes just as important, so watching and, and listening two different things, two different experiences, but it's the same show, which is great. And that is why we switched it over to Geek Smack. Of course, giving it a name, revitalizing it, having it a little bit better and a little bit cooler environment, so on and so forth. And we could do a lot more with Geek Smack than the Geekazine Weekly Podcast, which was a little bit lanky, I have to do admit. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, next week we hit 200th episode the 200th episode of Geek Smack, and we are going to give you uh, some, we're going to give you all the fun. We're going to have the fun. We're going to be talking about it. I'm going to be showing you the first video, the geek, first Geekazine podcast video I ever did. And then, of course, we'll go back and forth. We'll have some tech news. We'll have some geek news, and we'll have a lot of fun. But we are also going to be giving away a Roku 2. Yes, we're going to give away a Roku 2 on next week's show. You want to be entered in on that Roku 2 contest? Well, it's rather simple. I'm going to give you two questions. Two questions. Actually, very straightforward questions. You should be able to search on Geekazine to find the answers. 
two questions. The first, uh, well, I, I won't tell you what the questions are. You're going to have to go over to the show notes to find out those two questions. When you're ready to submit, all you have to do is email me, geekazine at gmail.com, geekazine at gmail.com, and uh, put in the subject line, Geek Smack Contest. If you don't put that in the subject line, I might miss your email. So remember, Geek Smack Contest. Geek Space Smack Space Contest. And then, of course, put in your two answers. Two questions. It's going to be very straightforward. It's going to be very easy to find the answers. So uh, that's basically it. And, of course, then next week, we'll randomly draw out of everybody that enters and we'll get two winners. Of course, if you want to send video submissions, we're up on YouTube. Go over to YouTube.com. If you go over to uh, geekazine.com forward slash YouTube, that gets you to the channel. Find this video. Go into the uh, go into the comments section and choose choose your video post. Record a video, and then of course go from there. And I'll play a few of those videos next week if they show up onto YouTube. So basically answer two questions, subject line geek smack contest, very, very important. And then of course, uh, tell me those two questions and you'll be entered in, excuse me, for that contest there. Woo, it's been a fun week and, uh, and we're going to have a lot more fun. You know, next week we're going to have show 200. The week after that, we're going to be in San Francisco with Adria Richards from but you're, you're a girl.com but you're a girl.com and we're going to be doing video of tech crunch disrupt and a few other things which is going to be great so we're going to have a ton of video coming out in about two weeks so no show uh in two weeks but next week the day after labor day is going to be episode number 200 so kind of get things ready kind of get your popcorn ready for next week and we'll go from there all right talk too much about that let's get into your tech smack for the week and hopefully i got these right now there we go we're going to start over on a website called dt.com, D-I-T-I-I.com. And we're talking about a guy by the name of Abdul Fattah John Jandale. Hopefully I pronounced that right. If you don't know who he is, I'll show you. This is him. And the cool thing about him is he's also known as Steve Jobs' biological father. Now, the story goes that he and and his girlfriend, uh, I believe it was uh, Susan Powell, or uh, 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 something like that. Anyway, they had Steve Jobs out of wedlock. She was embarrassed, so she moved to San Francisco and gave birth to Steve Jobs. Now, the cool thing about this, if you read through, he says, let me let me scroll down here on that on that line here. It says this. And I, I'm just very proud on this. I don't know why. He goes, where'd it go? Um, the pair were living in Wisconsin back then, he said, without telling me Joanne, Joanne uh, Joanne Simpson, that's who it is. Uh, the Powell. I don't know where I got Powell. It's kind of weird. Anyway. Uh, without telling me Joanne upped and left and moved to San Francisco. To have the baby without no, without anyone knowing, including me. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're in Madison, Wisconsin, for Geek Smack, and guess what? This is the birth state, or not the birth state, but uh, this is the conceived state of Steve Jobs. So that that's pretty cool. I, I don't know. I, I'm kind of proud of that. So, ladies and gentlemen, Steve Jobs, born here. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, it's an interesting article. You know, we've been talking about Steve Jobs since, of course, he talked about his retirement. He says, says "I'm, I'm done. I, I gotta, I gotta move on. Can't be CEO of uh, Apple anymore. I can't fulfill my duties. So I'll be chairman of the board, and that's pretty much it." So, of course, we've talked about that multiple times. If you go over to Geekazine, you'll actually see the the uh, the infographic on Steve Jobs' life that I did. And that's over at Geekazine. Of course, I'll put that in the show notes. But uh, very interesting article about his biological parents, um, and uh, which Abdul Afada is actually the vice president of Casino in Reno, Nevada, which is uh, another really cool point there. So if you want to read more on this, DITII.com, DT.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Samsung is unveiling three smartphones uh, this uh, very, very soon. And the interesting thing about these three smartphones is that they're going to have their own OS to them. 
Yeah, there is. Samsung Electronics has three smartphone models. They're going to run on their own operating system. Um, they're going to try and ex uh, expand the market share on low end, the low-end segment. So don't expect these smartphones to be like iPhones or Android phones and do a thousand different things. They're going to be like, you know, generic apps like Calculator and uh, Word Type Pad and, and stuff like that. They're aiming at the people that want a smartphone but are still on Nokia phones and, and stuff like that. A good market to go for. Uh, three models add seven wave series lineups and they're going to be on sale. Uh, well, they're, they were introduced. And so the uh, flagship, then they still have the, the Android Galaxy S model which is the, no, became the number two smartphone on that. So by unveiling these mid to low end models, uh, they can uh, they can really get into a market that they will really want to get into. It's, it's actually a very, very smart move, but don't expect to be playing Angry Birds on these phones. Don't expect to be watching lots of video on these phones. These phones are just to get into the market. And eventually after a year, you'll probably go, eh, I need a better smartphone from there. Might be completely surprised and completely blows every single other OS out of the water and uh, may even open up an app store. You never know. But Samsung, of course, is trying to get into that market. If you want to read more on that, go over to Reuters.com. Speaking of phones, we're over at PCWorld.com. Windows Phone 7 hits 30,000 apps. Now, when Windows Phone 7 came out, they said, we're going to open this app store, but this app store is not going to be like Apple's app store or Android's app store. It's going to be a little bit more thought provocative. So if you've got an app, you better really have an app that's going to do something. You know, no stupid beer apps or anything like that. I, I don't, it, it's going to be smarter apps. At least that's what they said back then. I suppose you can have a smarter beer app. But the reality is they wanted, they wanted applications that would actually sell. So you create an application, put 99 cents on it, you might get 50 downloads from your application on an iPhone. They want applications that you're going to use on a regular basis. So um, their app count uh, is basically way behind Apple's App Store. Uh, they had 425,000 apps as of June. And Google Android market had 250,000 apps in July. So it's slower for Windows Phone 7, but there are applications out there for it. So if you've got a Windows Phone 7, let me know. What, what's your favorite application there? What do you like, what you don't like? Let me know. Twitter me at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. All right, moving on to the Inquirer. Dot net, the inquirer.net. Facebook has been uh, reported to have paid hackers up to $40,000. $40,000 in finding problems. Now, they're not paying each Facebook hacker $40,000. They're paying, they've paid up to $40,000. The highest they've, they've, uh, they've paid for a issue that, that's been resolved was $7,000. So if you're a person that tinkers around in systems and you find a, a security flaw and maybe even you find a security flaw and you find a way to fix it you can send that to facebook and then you can turn around and they'll give you a reward kind of like crime stoppers you know you could be mcgruff the crime dog i suppose i don't know it'd be kind of cool but uh you can you know, most people are paid about 500 dollars. so if you find something a 500 dollars reward is not that bad so think about that so yeah just kind of remember that other people are looking and they might find it too. So I suppose the first person that finds it will get the $500. So start looking in your Facebook. And I know Google does something similar and they just hired one of their ha one of the hackers, one of the people that has been hacking into uh, doing little fixes and stuff like that in Google+. Plus. They just hired them into Google Plus's stable. So, you know, it, it kind of pays to be a hacker, I suppose. Anyway, if you want to read more about this, this is over at theinquirer.net, theinquirer.net. All right, let's move on here. Sprint has scheduled a, what they're calling a strategy update presentation on Friday, October 7th. And that brings us into, I forgot to do this one. Hold on, let's do this. It's here. So, ladies and gentlemen, this strategy update presentation is now the big rumor saying, oh, 
iPhone. They're going to talk about iPhone 5. Yay. On Sprint, iPhone 5. Yay. They told everybody at Sprint to hush. Don't say a word about iPhone 5. It's a, if it's brought up, just kind of shrug it off. Don't say yes or no. Don't say anything. Don't even say I. Don't even say A. Don't even say O. Don't even say you. Anyway, um, so if you are a Sprint employee and somebody says, hey, what about that iPhone 5? Is it coming to the Sprint? You can say, hey, look, squirrel. Anyway, uh, we'll find out what, what Sprint's going to be talking about. Of course, they have a lot more than just the iPhone. They have the Samsung Galaxy series. They have a bunch of other Android tablets. They don't have a fly flying around the studio like I just you might have just saw pass by the camera. Anyway, uh, <laughs> what do you think it's going to be? Do you think it's gonna be? Uh, do you think it's gonna be an iPhone 5? Are you really excited about iPhone 5? Do you think it has more of a chance to be on T-Mobile than it has to be than it is on Sprint? I did an article, a write-up about this, and I talked about how Sprint, basically, for Sprint to compete to get on iPhone, they have to convert their 4G over to LTE, which they have works to do to work in WiMAX and LTE. And of course, if they if they get the iPhone 5, will the iPhone 5 cater to the WiMAX community or the LTE community? I'm assuming LTE. They've already got that cross phone with the GSM CDMA for Verizon and Sprint. A lot of people are also saying, well, what's going to happen with T-Mobile? Well, the reality is uh, T-Mobile might not get an iPhone 5. It might just be on AT&T AT &T and Verizon. But if Sprint does get it, you have to worry about it. Also, AT&T has to worry about 4G. They don't have any solution right now. Hopefully, they'll have LTE rolled out by the time iPhone 5 comes out. Otherwise, they're going to have a lot of people that are very, very unhappy. For more on this information on this, on this, with this, and that, go over to appleinsider.com. What do you think? Do you, will you get an iPhone 5? If Are you really expecting it to be on Sprint? Do you really want it to be on Sprint? Let me know geekazine at gmail.com of course geekazine is my twitter handle do we need a gay pawn i don't know is, is is this a joke is this not a joke but apparently the lbgt lesbian by gay tranny community has basically come up with this community called gay pawn it's a site that provides subscribers with daily offers from local and regional businesses in, that are, uh, I guess, LGBT friendly. So I don't know. It, it's, I, in a way, I like the idea. I mean, you know, coupons geared towards a specific demographic. That's that's cool. But on the other hand, it's it, it brings a lot of questions. And and do we really need to have a segregated coupon system does is it just that necessary or uh, can is this is this a great business model to have and that's the bottom line would you use gay pawn over groupon would will groupon sue gay pawn because it's kind of way too close to their business model and their what they do these are things that we'll answer in future episodes of geek smack and I'll let you know. But in the meantime, if you want to go over to techcrunch.com, you can check out this article right here. All right, iTunes is uh, coming out with their beta release to developers of their iTunes cloud version, which they call Match, which is going to be pretty cool. They uh, they announced it back at the WWDC in 2011. Uh, it will, of course, set the cloud music service uh, from others. Uh, I have google music i have the spotify and i have uh and i have amazon cloud music so i have three services right now i don't know if i'm going to go to itunes match i've pretty much weaned myself off of itunes the only th time i really need itunes is when i want to load songs onto my iphone and of course if i gotta get an iphone 5 I'll, I'll continue to use it that way but they're gonna have to really impress me to for me to use uh the match service itunes match i guess you're going to call it so if you want to read more on this it's over on slashgear.com heading back to techcrunch.com epson's bringing its iprint application to android now epson 
did have an application for the uh, for the iPhone for a long time. Um, I have an Epson Artisan 810 upstairs. It's a great printer. And now it's moving over to Android. Uh, and so all you Android people are going to be really excited about it. You can take your pictures and print them right away onto your Android. I don't know if it can do it over the Internet. So if you're like in California and you want to print out pictures of your kids as, as you take them on your, on your device, then you can... Uh, then you'll be able to do that. But uh, I know that the application, if you're connected wirelessly, you can go to the Epson printer if it's on the same node from there. So um, it also supports, oh, I guess it will. It supports Box.net, Dropbox, and Evernote. So you'll have a lot more functionality to uh, print out your pictures. So that's pretty cool. I, I like that idea. Um, do you print pictures anymore? Do you go over to like Walgreens and print pictures or do you, do you print them at home or how do you do it? Do you, do you have scrapbooks or have you just decided I'm going all digital, have digital uh, picture frames and stuff like that? Let me know. Twitter me at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. This is great news for anybody that studies in Parkinson's. A little bit of science news right here. They, uh, they found a key barrier to understanding Parkinson's disease. Michael Devine and colleagues at the University College London basically took skin cells from somebody and who had Parkinson's and they turned them into stem cells and reprogrammed them to become brain cells. Then they basically mimicked the Parkinson's brain out of cells out of that. So it's great research. They've, they've, they've made a major accomplishment, which is a, a, it could be attributed to creating uh, or uh, preventing Parkinson's from future. Now, I read a little bit about this, and it, it's a great step. Of course, there's a long way to go. We're not going to cure Parkinson's tomorrow. And, of course, uh, places like Michael J. Fox Foundation are really striving to get you to get the, this, uh, this disease figured out. So if somebody does come down or uh, is diagnosed with Parkinson's, then they can uh, they can take care of it and give people normal lives. Maybe even Michael J. Fox could reprise his role at Back to the on Back to the Future. Who knows? I'm I'm really rooting for this. In the meantime, if you want to read more about this, go over to NewScientist.com. All right, last part of part one, we're going to get you into Geek Smack, of course, uh, Geek Smack crap and all that other good stuff, and we're going over to PCMag.com. Desktops aren't dead. A lot of people say that they are, but they're really not because if you want a powerful machine that will run your gaming systems, that will do your video editing, that will do your photoshopping in high quality, sometimes getting a desktop machine will be a lot easier and a lot cheaper than getting a laptop or any other device for that matter. So at PC Mag, what they did was they created and tested a few manufacturers of few products that could that could help out in creating yourself a one thousand dollar machine now ladies and gentlemen i i built my machine uh, my last desktop i built it uh, two years ago and it's still in great condition because i can actually change out the processor and make it into a brand new machine i can double its ram and make it into a machine that actually is comparable to today's machine i uh, today's machines i bought mine two years ago and I built it for $700. So now I just have to put in a new video card and a new processor and a couple more gigs of memory. I can throw in another $400 and have a machine that's comparable to any machine that's out there and, and have it for another two years. That's what I like about building machines is they say it's a two year thing. You buy a brand new machine. In this case, it's two years. And for a part of the price, I can build a brand new or rebuild to a brand new machine and save a lot of parts and not have to buy the operating system. And I know that it's high quality. Great. So it's a great, this is a great article for those of you who want one, want to learn how to build computers and two are planning to, to go to college and, and need a computer that's high end to do your video gaming and do your, your video work or your, your uh, photoshopping or anything that requires a better processor than what most laptops can do. Now this MacBook Pro right here, uh, this is an i7. This is pretty good, but my desktop can still kick this MacBook Pro's butt. It is what it is. So 
But if you want to read more on this, go over to PCMag.com. And ladies and gentlemen, that does bring us to the end of part one, the Tech Smack part of the show. What did you think? What you didn't think? Let me know. Twitter me at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com. We're going to get you into part two. But first of all, we've got to say hello to our sponsors. Hello, sponsors. And we will be right back with Geekazine and Geek Smack. Have you ever thought about how much of your life is on your computer? You lost it all. When your files are backed up with Carbonite, you'll be able to get them back with just a few clicks. Ladies and gentlemen, back it up now because you might not get a chance to back it up later. And that's the important thing. Make sure all your files, your documents, your settings, everything like that is all saved up in the cloud. That way, if you have a problem, whether fire, theft, hard drive failure, water damage, whatever, you can get your files back just instantly like that. That's what a program like Carbonite does for you. It backs up to the cloud. It's a secure backup. It's a piece of software that sits on your computer and runs whenever you're not working on it. So you might want to give it about a 24 to 48 hour window to, to do the initial backup. But once it's done, you just kind of set it and forget it and it goes from there. It's a great program and it's saved so many files, 7 billion to date as far as their records are concerned. 15,000 hard drives will die today. Don't let yours be one of them. This is a special offer. Remember that code TPN. It's going to get you a 15-day free trial. And when you're ready to buy one-year membership to Carbonite Online Backup, use the offer code TPN for a two-month free uh, out of that one year. So remember the offer code TPN, two months free out of a one-year purchase membership. Of course, we're also brought to you by Audible.com today. Download yourself a free audiobook on me. And, of course, get yourself a 14-day free trial with Audible.com. It's a great program, and I'm going to tell you something. I use it all the time. I use it for uh, listening to books. I, I don't like to read that much. Sometimes I like to read. I, I want to put more focus, more attention on the book. So I'll put in the Audible, uh, Audible audio podcast, or whatever you want to call it, and listen to it while I'm reading it at the same time. And it keeps my attention to the book. And it's it's pretty cool. It's very challenging, very awesome. Download yourself one free audiobook. One free audiobook and, of course, the 14-day free trial by going over to audiblepodcast.com forward slash geekazine. Audiblepodcast.com forward slash geekazine for the 14-day trial over at audible.com. Crap. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome back into the show. We are on the Geek Smack Crap, where basically we look at and find interesting products that people make, and you can actually buy. I don't know why you'd want to buy it, but you could buy it. And some of them are kind of cool. I suppose I can see a little bit of purchasing on that. And some are I'm like, well, why am I why am I buying this? I don't know. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into your geek smack crap for this week. We're gonna start over at businessunusual.net. You can now get yourself a pair of sandals. And inside those pair of sandals is a flask where you can store uh, about, I don't know, probably a couple ounces of alcohol. If you need to sneak into a concert or get into something, someplace, and you need some alcohol, you can might not store it in your shoe, I suppose. This is a, this is an interesting flask idea, and they didn't mention a price, but you can purchase it. You can go over to uncrate, uncrate.com to find out more information from there. I don't know if I'd want to have a sandal filled with alcohol, walking around the beaches and stuff like that, stepping into things, and I, I don't know. What do you think? Would you buy yourself a sandal like this? Uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you want to buy yourself a tie. And this is over at lostinasupermarket.com. You could get yourself this really cool tie because it's made half from recycled cassette tapes and half from cotton sonic fabric. And that makes these, uh, or I'm sorry, half cotton, which makes these sonic fabric audio ties this great purchase. Well, the ties are not cheap. They're about $120 each. So if you really like dad a lot, 
why don't you just make them a mixtape and then they can enjoy that instead of getting a tie. But if you want to get them a tie, this is a great little gag gift, especially if you're on Wall Street and you have $120 to burn. So uh, get this. It's the half recycled cassette tape, half recycled cotton tie. And then, of course, maybe, maybe you know, we, we live in a day, we're in an age where we got to get a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more sanitized. And, you know, sometimes you have to scratch in some really interesting places and you need to clean up. Well, maybe you should try this one. Maybe you touched your genitals and it's a sanitized cream. Now, the funny thing about this is the, the same company makes the same sanitizer cream that that basically says different things maybe you uh, i don't know maybe you just picked up something and you need to clean your hands it's, you know they're just uh playing on the idea that you should uh sanitize your hands and which isn't too bad i mean for 4.95 it's a great little bottle to have and kind of little thing to say hey you know hey look what i got <laughs> uh, look i'll touch my yeah, anyway we won't talk about that too much but because this is a family safe friendly show but we still got to report the news so if you want to get that go over to neat o shop neat o shop.com that's only 4.95 so it's very affordable and that's the geek smack crap for this week Geek Smack. all right ladies and gentlemen boys and girls we're going to get you right into the Geek Smack News, but first of all, we've got to ask a question. It's the uh, question of the week, which I haven't been doing lately. I'm going to bring it back into the show. And the question of the week is simply, with all this news of Steve Jobs, are you more likely or less likely to purchase an Apple product? Are you more likely or less likely to purchase an Apple product? To answer that poll, go over to geekazine.com. If you go down to uh, about uh, a quarter of the way down, here, I'll go over to geekazine.com and show you. If you go about a quarter of the way down, do that, you'll be able to see, there's Geekazine. Of course, we did some redesign, as you can see. Um, go down a little bit, and there's the poll right there. Polls with Steve Jobs News. Are you more likely to buy an Apple, less likely to buy an Apple, or neutral about the idea? Of course, go to geekazine.com for everything else. We have the Geek Smack. We have the Day in Tech History, which is a seven-day-a-week podcast that uh, runs down your tech history. The five tech things you should know about, which I record on Thursdays, and the special media feed, which we have a lot of great stuff, including the OTT, which is another show where we talk weekly about over-the-top television, cutting your cable, and a whole lot more. Gabriel Guzman helped me on this week. We do a Google Hangout. So if you're on Google Plus and you want to be part of the Hangout, let me know and we'll put you in the circle and then go from there. And then, of course, we're talking about everything else. Uh, the infographic I was telling you about, a bite out of Steve Jobs' life. You can check that out over on Geekazine. It's a full, full, uh, full ar article about the different things of Steve Jobs' life. If you find any problems to it, let me know, and uh, we'll fix it from there. And then, of course, we're talking about TechCrunch Disrupt with Adria Richards, who's going to be uh, joining me uh, to uh, to report on TechCrunch Disrupt. She's got t some different views. She's going to do some interviews, and we're going to do a lot of great stuff. So if you'd like to sponsor us to TechCrunch Disrupt, we have some great price plans. Let me know, and we'll go from there. But, of course, go over to geekazine.com for all that Blippity bloppity blue and schlippity schloppity blue schlu two two. Anyway, so that's over at geekazine.com, of course. Uh, put out uh, and, and let us know the what you think on the poll. So, all right, let's get in your geek smack, and we're going to start over at geekalugi.com. Mario Geeks, you'll be very impressed with this. Apparently, there's going to be a new version of Mario, which is going to include portal support. So let's play a little bit of this video right here. Hopefully it won't come up with it. There we go. So basically you got Mario right there. and got a little bit of sound there. And what he's going to do is he's going to create a portal. And now that portal is set right there. As you can see, the, the, uh, the turtle is bouncing between the portals. And you can create different portals from there. It's uh, actually pretty cool. Let's mute that sound out there. Anyway, you can check that all out over at uh, geekalugi.com. Uh, this is, uh, from what I understand, this is a game, a version of the game that they're, uh, that they're testing out there. So if you want to read more on it, if you're a gaming geek, if you're a Mario geek, you're very, very interested in this. So check that out over at geekalugi.com. 
Whoops, let's, uh, I just closed something I shouldn't have. Let's do that there. We're going over to Mashable.com from there. And we're talking about artificial intelligence. Now, we have these things called chatbots where they have artificial intelligence. You know, it's a, it's a computer-generated person standing there, and it's talking in a computer-generated voice. Well, over at Mashable.com, they're showing these two artificial intelligent power chat box that are talking to each other. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we've seen, uh, they did a few videos, but this one seems to be the most cool, I guess. Hello they there. did what are called clever are you, bots. How are you? Great, you. I'm okay. That's good. Are you good? Yes, I am good. I just said I was. No, you didn't. I said I was. So you are a robot? No, my name is Cliverbot. Yes, you are a robot and your name is Cliverbot. I am a robot. Yes, I know. Together we are robots. I'm not a robot. You get the I idea there. But, um, said, but uh, it's they're, they're two clever bots, and they're, they're arguing back and forth. The, the ending is kind of hilarious because they're even talking in a different, a different language, which is pretty cool there. So what do you think? Have you, have you ever used artificial intelligence or clever bots or anything like that? Uh, let me know. Geekazine is my Twitter handle, of course. And, and you can read more about this. You can see this full video over at Mashable.com. There are some devil, daredevils out there. Uh, of course, we had Hurricane Irene for the uh, most of the East Coast. And some people that are still uh, still dealing with the after effects, flooding, uh, loss of power. I talked to uh, one person, and I, and I did a post on that, a guy by the name of Michael Gaines, who's also a pod podcaster, and how he was trying to, he was on a Google Hangout, had no power, had a limited amount of battery, was using his MiFi card, and he was still part of the Hangout, and he was talking about what was going on in New Jersey, which was amazing. So, But apparently there was this daredevil that, uh, for all you kite border geeks out there, this uh, daredevil basically had uh, decided well let's take some video let's we should see some awesome waves let's go and uh, do some kiteboarding and go from there i don't know what the copyright is on the kiteboarding this is over at the huffingtonpost.co.uk so you can check that out i won't play that beyond this because it might be a copyright violation so anyway uh, check that out over at huffingtonpost.co.uk there is a guy that uh, wants to thank Steve, of course, for all you GPS geeks out there. He basically ran, was it uh, 21 kil kilometers, which is about 13 miles, and GPS the whole way. And of course, he sh he created the shape of the Apple logo, and uh, he ran with uh, two iPhones to create and 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 collect all the data. And of course, this is not the first time that he's that he's done this. Um, he's done other shapes. He's uh, he's done uh, other people have done this before, so it's uh, pretty cool. He runs with a program called Runkeeper, which uh, tracks his elevation, his pace, his speed, and heart rate. So it's a great little application, great little promotion, and of course a great little thank you to Steve Jobs for creating the iPhone, so he could cre they could create Runkeeper, so he could do this type of stuff with that. So. I'm I'm pretty impressed with how they've been how they've been using GPS technology outside of simple stuff outside of what it was really meant for to create images and 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 go from there so but if you want to read more about this go over to geeky-gadgets.com geeky-gadgets.com If you're a pool geek you might be interested in this now I remember uh, when we go to Mandalay Bay, there's the, right before the Shark Reef, you walk past this uh, this projector, and, and of course you look to the wall and you look at the projection, and then as you're walking in the light, it, you see that it disrupts the, the video, and then of course you see little waves and stuff like that. You might see it in your local mall or something like that, kids playing around on uh, there's a projector that's pointed to the floor, maybe some pool balls or something like that, and when they step on a pool ball, it moves around and hits all the other pool balls interactive augmented reality in a different way well apparently a company called obscura digital has created a thing called the q light and this and you can see this in vegas in the esquire soho apartment and the hard rock hotel and casino and the paradise tower penthouse and this pool table 
works on that same premise. So when you hit a ball, you know, uh, the you can have waves uh, move things around. You can have flames go around. We'll, we'll play a little bit of this. And it actually brings a little bit more interactivity with the pool table. Of course, they got music too. Probably mute that a little bit. So anyway, uh, you got this. Uh, you got this pool table. Every time he hits it, um, I'm assuming it's the exact same technology. There's a projector above, and and of course, it creates different uh, different scenes. So you can like the waves. They have flames. They have uh, they have other things that you can use to uh, play pool with and, and give it a more interactive feel. Will we see this at, uh, at billiards contests or anything like that? Probably not, but if you just wanna play a simple game of pool and have flames coming out of the end, eh, it's kinda cool. So anyway, check that out. It's over at obscuradigital.com. And of course, that's probably a pretty expensive little piece there. So if you wanna put it into your pool table, uh, you, you might wanna wait, I don't know. Anyway, so anyway, that does bring us to the end of Geek Smack. We're gonna get you into the main subject here in a second, uh, and uh, yeah, in a second. So we will be right back on Geek Smack. Geek Smack is also brought to you by Stitcher. The audio version is over on Stitcher. Go over to Stitcher.com forward slash Geek. Stitcher.com forward slash Geek. Enter in your email address. Download the application for your Apple, your Android, your BlackBerry, your WebOS. Well, soon, no WebOS. But anyway, you can download that and you get a chance, a chance to win $100. It's all from Stitcher and Geekazine. So go over to geekazine.com forward slash geek, enter in your email address and download this great way to listen to all your podcasts in a mobile way over at stitcher.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last part of the show, and we'll get you on your way. And that, of course, is the, the featured topic. And the topic of the week is about CNN and the, the Tribune and basically how they're getting into the tablet game in their own little ways. Now, you know, it is inevitable, Mr. Anderson, um, adopting a mobile solution for your newspaper is as important as the newspaper itself. They're saying five, ten years from now, a print newspaper will probably be almost as impossible to find as, I don't know, a pop top from a soda, soda can nowadays. Everything's going to go online. We're going to be going to tablet papers. You'll find, you know, maybe you'll find local rags that will be in a paper format. But getting online is very, very important. Getting online mobily is even more important. And getting a tablet solution is probably the most important because they're going to be really pushing out these tablets, and we're going to start to see it now. Case in point, the Tribune, which does the Chicago Tribune. They do the uh, Los Angeles uh, Tribune and one more that I'm thinking I can't remember exactly. Um, so basically what happened, what's going to happen is they're going to soon offer a tablet with a subscription, which is probably going to be like a multi-year subscription to their, their newspaper. And you'll you'll pay it, and then with your subscription, you'll get this tablet. Then that tablet will be geared toward the paper. So, like, let's say you get a five-year subscription to the Chicago Tribune, and that's going to be like three, four hundred dollars for the subscription. With the subscription, you get the tablet. So wherever you are, you'll be able to download the Chicago Tribune exclusively, you know, with exclusive content for that tablet. And uh, that's that's the way they're going. It's not been announced yet how they're going to do it they're not they don't know which tablets they're going to use they don't know if it's going to be on an android platform or most likely an android platform as opposed to a, an apple platform but it will be the face the new face of getting your news content and you'll get some cool extras with that so it's actually a, a, probably going to be a good overall idea and will definitely reduce the amount of paper by a hundred percent eventually eventually so in the meantime cnn has bought a company called zite now they're they don't make tablets but they make an application for the ipad and i'm assuming for android and stuff like that and uh, basically zite is is just a online magazine and now cnn can take zite and turn it into whatever they want they can keep it as zite 
or they can make it CNN Zeit or whatever they want to do with that. Um, it's a new cross discovery platform. Mark Johnson, CEO of Zeit, was very excited about it in the uh, press release that I read today and uh, could change the face of how you read the newspaper. Now, let me ask you this question. Do you read from a regular conventional paper or do you read from a tablet nowadays? Do you read from your computer more than you read from a paper? I'll tell you, if a paper is sitting in a coffee shop or maybe at the work, uh, in, the, in, the, in the work lounge, I'll pick up the paper and read a little bit of it, but not as much as I used to. So by changing it to a tablet, uh, changing it to a mobile solution, it, it's saving time, money, and paper, literally, going greener and doing a lot more for the environment than, than what it is now. So pretty cool stuff. Let me ask you this question. If you could get yourself a tablet with a five-year subscription to your local newspaper, would you do it? A 10-year subscription, would you do that? Let me know. Twitter me at Geekazine or Geekazine at gmail.com, and uh, we'll talk about that as we go from there. Thanks a lot. That, that does bring us to the end of Geekazine and, the, and Geek Smack. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Next week, 200th episode, win yourself a Roku 2. Answer the two questions at the top over in the show notes. Of course, subscribe to the show notes while you're at it. And then, of course, when the next week's Geekazine Geek Smack comes out, we'll be able to tell you. And, of course, we'll announce the winner by doing a random, uh, random entry of all the entries. And we'll pick a winner from there. So, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for listening. My name is Jeffrey Powers. www.geekazine.com is where you go for all that information and uh, a lot more than just Geek Smack with five tech things, the day in tech history, so on and so forth. So until next week, you guys take care and smack, smack it away. We'll smack it away right now. I don't know if that, that's probably not a good outro uh, quote, but I just thought I'd play with it. Anyway, take care.